DCCC head Sherry Bustos recently announced a new policy that I told you all about on the show last week where the DCCC would be blacklisting any consultant or consulting firm that chooses to work with a Democrat who's challenging an incumbent. So it's something that is brazenly undemocratic, it's antithetical to small d democratic values, and what she's trying to do is shut people out from challenging the status quo. And, you know, it's hypocritical because the Democratic Party, they constantly boast about their values and how much they believe in inclusivity and diversity and pluralism. But what this new rule would do is stifle that. But yet they're still doing it because they're that adamant about protecting the status quo. Now, to give you a follow-up to the story, progressives are pissed and they are not taking this new policy lying down because there are some progressive Democrats, part of the uh, Congressional Progressive Caucus, individuals like Pramila Jayapal, Ro Khanna, Mark Pocan, who actually decided to confront her about this in a closed-door meeting. And as Politico reports, it got pretty heated. So leaders of the Congressional Progressive Caucus clashed Wednesday with the head of Democratic campaign arm over a new policy that they say hurts primary challengers nationwide, but which campaign officials have no plans to drop. A meeting between Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee Chair Sherry Bustos and progressive members became heated as Bustos' liberal colleagues pressed her to reverse course on a just-announced rule barring Democratic consultants from working with primary challengers if they want to have business with the national campaign arm. Progressive Caucus co-chairs Mark Pocan and Pramila Jayapal and caucus member Representative Ro Khanna requested the meeting with Bustos to explain why the new policy issued to consultants last week created a monopoly of DCCC sanctioned vendors and would blackball too many talented vendors and consultants. But Bustos made clear that she would not change the policy, which she argues is crucial to protecting Democratic incumbents after last fall's huge gains in the House. Progressives erupted this week after the DCCC announced the policy change aimed at deterring primary challengers. Critics see it as an attempt to suppress groups like Justice Democrats, which helped elect Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ayanna Presley, both of whom knocked out longtime Democratic incumbents. Pramila Jayapal, Mark Pocan, and I met with Sherry Bustos to make it clear that we strongly oppose her new policy that stifles competition and blackballs any consultant who works for a challenger, Kana told Politico. Many progressives in Congress will fight until this rule is changed, Kana added. Casio Cortez told reporters this week that the policy should be reversed, arguing that it puts underfunded upstart candidates at a disadvantage, people like herself last year. Primaries are often the only way that underrepresented and working class people are able to have a shot at pursuing elected office, Ocasio-Cortez told reporters Wednesday. She added that several longtime New York City members, like Representatives Elliot Engel and Nydia Velasquez, got their start as primary challengers. Now, in addition to that, on Twitter, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez also urged people to hit the DCCC where it hurts. She writes, the DCCC's new rule to blacklist and boycott anyone who does business with primary challengers is extremely divisive and harmful to the party. My recommendation, if you're a small dollar donor, pause your donations to the DCCC and give directly to swing candidates instead. And I second that. If you're still someone who's giving to the DCCC, what are you doing? You've got to pause those donations, stop them all together, stop contributing to the DNC and the DTRIP, and give directly to candidates. There's a number of phenomenal candidates who are running for office in 2020, so I don't get why you are giving that money to the DCCC. If, in fact, you still are, I doubt many of my viewers are still giving money to the DCCC, but understand that all you're doing is adding, adding to the leverage that they have against progressives because if they want to play dirty it's time that we play dirty too and that's what they're doing they're confronting her and they're saying okay if you want to blacklist our consultants and consulting firms that work with primary challengers well grassroots donors we're gonna blacklist you how do you like that and i love it you know it's it's refreshing to see progressives in elected office actually stand up for themselves, not just be pushovers and allow the establishment to do what they want to shut out primary challengers. Because if you are going to purport to be part of an establishment that is inclusive, that cares about diversity, 
How could you with the straight face try to sell us this bullshit rule which brazenly acts to protect the status quo? It's absolutely absurd. So this is what they always tell us. When Tom Perez purged progressives from high-ranking positions on the DNC, he told us that he did it for purposes of increasing diversity. Now, of course, that was bullshit because he got rid of uh, Barb's, I can't remember her last name, Cyperstein maybe. She's basically a long-serving DNC member who is a trans American. She got rid of, uh, he got rid of James Zogby, who's an Arab American. So he claimed that he did that in the name of diversity when in actuality, he was just hiding behind the facade of diversity when in reality, he wanted to protect the status quo. But since the Democratic Party has long maintained now that they care so much about diversity, then when you look at the makeup of elected officials in Congress, they're primarily white males. So why can't we flip it now on them and say, well, you're protecting the white male establishment. You're blocking potentially dozens of female candidates and people of color who want to challenge the status quo. If they can't even live up to their own principles in trying to increase diversity, then I think that we need to call them out. Call them out for that. Because this is absolutely unacceptable. But look, Broader point is that the fact that they're fighting and Ro Khanna is pledging to keep fighting until this rule is reversed is incredibly refreshing to me. Now, Sherry Bustos, who's the individual in this picture who heads the DCCC right now, she's not budging. That's what she at least maintains. She's saying, I refuse to budge. So it just goes to show you that she was put there in that position because she's willing to do things like this. She's willing to protect the status quo. And the DCCC is an organization that has one goal, supposedly. It's to get Democrats elected. It's not supposed to be to protect incumbent Democrats. You're supposed to get Democrats elected. So if we can primary a corporate Democrat and get someone in there that's more electable, isn't that good for your overall goal, theoretically speaking? Look, they're never gonna change, and if we can get this rule to be undone, there's gonna be another rule that pops up. It's just par for the course. This is what the establishment does. They use the institutional advantages that they have against us, so that way they can protect themselves. It's like those scenes in like zombie movies where they're holding the door as a bunch of zombies are trying to get through and progressives in this instance are the zombies, so this may not necessarily be a very good analogy, but they're holding the door, but sooner or later, we're going to burst through, and we're going to eat them. So it's going to happen sooner or later. We will take over, but it's just a matter of having to try to subvert and circumvent all of these idiotic tactics. Well, they're not idiotic. They're, they're unethical. That's, I think, the better word, because they're actually smart, if you think about it, to give them credit. It's smart that they use all of these bullshit techniques, but understand that we see through them. You're not going to gaslight us into thinking that this is to protect us and to bolster your goal of getting more diverse candidates elected. It's not. So we're going to stay on them, but understand that if we get this rule done like whack-a-mole, a new rule will pop up that we're going to have to fight. This is what we're going to have to do, because, you know, um, Old habits die hard, and being in power is something that you don't want to let go of because you have it, and you love it, and you like all of the admiration that you get, so of course they're going to try to protect that and protect themselves. It's self-interest, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I truly believe that we will win, and... I'm more optimistic now because there are people like AOC and Ro Khanna and Pramila Jayapal who are choosing to push back and not just lie down and die like Democrats tend to do, including progressive ones. That's all changing now, and it's great to see. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.